Hey, what's going on, everybody? Mr. Shua coming right back at you one more time. Questions 31 through 40. Let's jump right into it. What is the equation of the horizontal asymptote of the graph of the following equation? f of x equals 6 to the x minus 5 power minus 4. The easiest way to do that, why don't we just plug it in? 6 to the x minus 5 minus 4. The answer should be obvious, but let's just graph it anyway. When we graph it here, it looks like the asymptote is at, what's that, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. y equals negative 4. Boom. Answer C. Okay. Easiest way, but you could have just told from the negative 4 here. But y equals negative 4. All right. Let's go on. Question 32. Which function best represents this graph? Again, graph them all. And when you graph, if you graph the first one, it looks something like that. You graph this, the second one, it looks something like that. You graph the third only d well let's just graph it just to see all right clear this 2x minus 4. and lo and behold it matches okay choice d all right Again, with these, graph them all and just see which one does it. All right, on to 33. The graph of g of x equals log 2x has, graph it. That's, you know, simplest way. Log 2x. Let's look at it and see. Okay, let's zoom in on that puppy right there. Take a look at it. Well, it does have an x-intercept right there, but there is no y-intercept. It actually is going to have an asymptote. So it has one x-intercept, no y-intercept. Choice B is our answer here. Okay. Let's go on. Question 34. We're just moving through this thing here. Throughout which of the following intervals is f of x equals x minus 1 times x minus 4 squared only decrease? Graph it. First, let me put this back to normal. Do that. Put that back to normal. Then, let me go over to my y1. Clear out what's in there. Now I'm going to put in x minus 1 times x minus 4 squared. All right, let's graph that puppy. All right, so it's decreasing between here and here. I'm going to zoom in a little bit on that. And, okay, zooming in didn't help me. Uh, so let me put it back to normal. No biggie. All right, so I get the graph back here. So again, it's decreasing from here. Well, that's one, two. So from two, three, four. So between two and four, it's decreasing. Option D, decreasing between two and four. All right, simple, easy peasy. All right, everybody, let's keep it going with question 35. Given f of x equals log x minus 16 plus 15, what is the equation of an asymptote of the graph of the given function? Okay, so if we plug in log x 
minus 16 plus 15. These are bigger numbers than the 10 and negative 10 that we give. So we're going to need to expand our window to see what's happening here. So I hit window. What I've done is I've increased my X max to 20 and make the scale 2. I increased my Y max to 20 and make the scale 2 just so I could see this graph because 20 is bigger than either 16 or the 15. All right. And we graph and we see it starts here and goes here. So there's an asymptote right here. So that's going to be at x equals 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. Where x is 16, that's an asymptote there. Where x equals 16. All right. Let's see here. See, because starting at 17, we start to get values. But everything up to 16, we get nothing. Error. So x equals 16. Okay, choice A. Again, plug these in, and then you may have to adjust your window for some of these to get it. All right, so x equals 16 for A, and let's move on. Question 36. The graph of a function is shown on the grid. What appears to be the range? Y values. Well, it looks like Y value. Well, Y is 1 here. Y is 2. Y is 3. Y is 4. 1, 2, 3, and 4. 1, 2, 3, and 4 for the Y values. Yep, that's what it is. It's not 1 through 4 because there's a step in between. It's just one here, it's just two, it's just three, just four. That one. So it wouldn't be C. It's B A. Because there's it's not one through four. It's not continuous like that. Step function. All right. Let's look at question 37. The heights of a large population of ostriches are normally distributed, which is closest to the percentage of these heights that is within three standard deviations of the mean. Chapter 8, I believe, is your statistics chapter. And in that chapter, you learn about the empirical rule. And what the empirical rule is, is that if you break down a bell curve, all right, within one standard deviation to the left or right, is 68% of the total population, 34 here, 34% here. Within two standard deviations, you're going to have another 13 and a half or 13 and a half, which basically comes to what, 97%? And then within three standard deviations, excuse me, 95%. Yes, 95%. And then 2.35 and 2.35 here with the standard deviation, that's another 2.7. So it's the 68, 95, 99.7 is what some people call it. The 68, 95, 99.7 rule. So within three standard deviations, you have 99.7% of your data. And then outside of three standard deviations, 0 0.15, 0 0.15, it's 0.3. So that gives you 100 total. So within three standard deviations, 99.7%. And if you remember empirical rule, you would have just circled D and moved on to the next question. Okay, question 38. Which of these situations involves a combination? Now, from your statistics chapter, now, permutation order matters in a permutation, like name the presidents in order. The order matters. Combination order doesn't matter. It says name four presidents. Order doesn't matter. They just ask you to name four of them. But if they ask you to name the four presidents, you know, according to when they served, the order would matter. So in a combination, order doesn't matter. So which of these involves a combination? Well, let's see which of these doesn't uh, matter for the order. Determining how many different groups of three employees can be chosen from 10 employees? So they're just saying choose, choose, choose three out of 10. So 10 choose three. 
Order doesn't matter. It's just saying choose three. That's a combination. Let's look at B. Determining how many different seating charts can be made, placing seven people around the table. Well, seating chart order matters. Different. So that's a permutation. Look at C. Determining how many different ways eight runners can be assigned lanes on the track. So the order matters how you're placing them on the track. That's a permutation. Determining how many different six-letter passwords can be made. Order matters in a password. That's a permutation. The only one that's not a permutation is A, just choosing three out of ten. Okay? Let's move on to question 39. What is the 14th term of the arithmetic sequence with a first term of seven common difference of ten? Arithmetic sequence. Okay? Formula arithmetic sequence. We're going to use the formula here, right, for arithmetic sequence. So, arithmetic sequence A of n equals A sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. Now, A sub 1 is the first term of your sequence, of course, and n is whatever term they're asking for, in this case 14, D is your common difference. It says your common difference is 10. So A sub N, so A of 14, the 14th term equals A sub 1, our first term of 7, plus that term we're looking for 14 minus 1, times the common difference of 10. And that equals 7 plus 13 times 10. 13 times 10 is 137, plus 130 is 137, which is choice B, okay? Again, it's all in picking the correct formula to use in order to get your answer. All righty. And then question 40, okay. The graph of the function G is shown on the following grid. Which graph best represents the inverse? Now, remember, inverse means opposite. Easiest way to solve this, look at this graph. What is a point? Well, here's one point here, which would be 4, 0. So then I would look for which graph has a, a point of 0, 4. Here's another point, 0, 2. I would look for a graph which has 2, 0. So out of the four graphs, choice C has 0, 4 and 2, 0. That right there. Easy. Opposite. Inverse. That's all you need. Okay. Now, in the last video, I'm going to cover the last 10 questions and we'll be done. Okay. See you in the next video.